So you have in 1773, the beginning with an auspicious moment, Governor Hutchinson lecturing to the assembly and immediately it backfires politically. And it's actually at this moment that John Singleton Copley does that stunning portrait of Samuel Adams, commissioned actually by John Hancock. And Adams is pointing at the Massachusetts Charter of 1691. This is what gives the assembly its power and prerogative. We have a written charter. It's not up to Parliament or the governor to decide the charter now has changed or the time has passed this by. It's a written charter. And in his other hand, he is holding the instructions from the town of Boston. The people of Boston had elected Samuel Adams and had the power to instruct him as to how he should vote. This is the meaning of this portrait. We're focusing on Adams' hands, pointing to the charter, holding the instructions of his constituents. This is a signal moment in American political history, as Hutchinson has explained the changing nature of power in the empire and Samuel Adams is pointing to the sources of power in Massachusetts. So Parliament, uh, or I'm sorry, the Privy Council is asked to look into whether Hutchinson should be recalled. And following this, a couple of other things happen which indicate that things will not go well for Governor Hutchinson or for um, the Olivers. First, Hutchinson, uh, by the way, Peter Oliver later wrote a history of the American Revolution. Has anyone read this? No, not even the, okay, Peter Oliver. And his explanation for what happened was quite simple. A couple of guys in Boston, namely Samuel Adams and James Otis, really hated Thomas Hutchinson. And they were able to whip up popular enthusiasm so much against him that he was forced out of office and ultimately Massachusetts led the way to independence. So it was because of the centralization of this political hysteria in Boston that we had this revolution. Uh, Oliver wrote this from London where he was in exile in the late 1770s. There is an element of truth in that and both Samuel Adams and James Otis did have almost a pathological hatred for Thomas Hutchinson. Uh, but that's not what triggers the revolution. Instead, it's something else and something that really caught Judge Oliver by surprise. Remember in 1772, the assembly had impeached him. He had weathered that because the governor's council threw it out. In 1773, 1774, Judge Oliver goes to Worcester to open a session of court. Court's impaneled. The judge is sitting behind his bench. The jurors are brought in. The jurors sit down. The jurors look over at the judge and say, you've been impeached by our assembly. We can't serve in a court over which you preside until this matter has been resolved. And they get up and walk out. I don't know if you've ever been on a jury and done that. I don't recommend it. But it's impossible for Judge Oliver to impanel a jury in Worcester. He thought the whole problem was in Boston because these two guys hated his brother-in-law. It turns out these farmers in Worcester County won't serve in a court because he is sitting there. He finds the similar experience in Salem and in other places. So his term as a judge ends because no juror in Massachusetts will serve under him. This is, I think, what John Adams meant by this revolution happening in the minds of people deciding how they will be governed and deciding who will govern them. 